good motivated <laughs> oh talk to me tell me more no i just this, this is just after talking to you yesterday <laughs> oh well <laughs> you don't have to go into all the details of course yeah. but t tell me um what what were your primary takeaways from that i think pretty much everything we spoke about um is applicable to everyone in the group so what, what did you learn yesterday yeah absolutely um so i just I can't get behind on my um, contacts. Um, I need to just be more proactive about making sure I, I hit uh, on my contacts every week to get to the numbers that I'm trying to reach. Um, so I need to basically stay on my schedule, follow my calendar. That's right. And um, we, we, we also talked about commitment yesterday. We, did, we, we talked about it a little bit um, on the, on the growth call yesterday, but um, there's a difference between trying to do something and committing to do something, right? Yep. Trying, you're gonna try to hit all your numbers this week? That sounds to me like you might give it like a somewhere between a seven and an eight uh, effort level. And if it happens, it happens. The other um, word is commitment, which is to say, I don't care if I have to go to Target, Walmart, the other Target, the other Walmart, the other Target, the other Walmart, and three o'clock in the morning, I'm hitting my numbers because my family depends on me to hit my numbers. Make sense? Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, Mirinelli has a hell of a week ahead of her, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, my okay. husband and I are going to do bold 100 for the next two days. <laughs> That's, that, that actually is a bold 200. Bold 200, right. correct. Marinelli's going to do a bold 100, um, and her husband's going to do a bold 100, Michael. And what, what, what we discussed is Marinelli's going to do a bold 100 with her spear, and her husband's going to do a bold 100 with um, uh, essentially uh, expired and for sale by owners and circle prospecting the first day, and then they're going to switch and do it the other way the other, the other day or the next day. The idea is there, we're going to throw them into the wolves and we're going to figure out whether they like this stuff or not. It's very possible that neither one of them will like this stuff and that's fine, but we'll know very, as quickly as possible that we need to adjust um, how they spend their time and how they, and, and what methods they use for lead generation. Okay. I appreciate you being um, uh, vulnerable in your, in your numbers yesterday. I hope that was helpful. Absolutely. Thank you for, for holding me accountable. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, if, if she does this, let me rephrase that. When she does this, she will probably have the best week of any PC student of any week since we started this thing. So you have a, you've set yourself a lofty goal. Congratulations. Okay. Who did some surprising and delighting yesterday? I called um, a former client, we were in the middle of a, of a deal and her husband died. And uh, so that tanked the deal and she ended up moving out of town, out of state. But yesterday I just, I don't know what prompted me to call her. I just called her and checked in on her and, and uh, it happened to be their 25th, what would have been their 25th anniversary. And so I did that and um, uh, you, you'll probably never know how valuable that call was to her, how meaningful yeah. that call was to her. Well, and I wanted to do it because I wanted to show myself surprise and delight is not about uh, getting a client. That's exactly you know? right. Because she'll never be my client, you know. She'll, they won't, she'll stay with her family out of state. And so that's the point to me of surprise and delight. Well, surprise and delight, you, 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 very you, you pretty much alluded to what I'm about to say is, Surprise and delight is not about you. Surprise yeah. and delight is about them. Yeah, right. Yep. Right. And so when you go out of your way to do something that may or may not lead to business in the future, and quite frankly, they know it, it's even more meaningful. Yeah. Right. I built my business in large part by helping renters. Okay. Just about every single renter that I ever helped knew that I was getting paid next to nothing. And I still did the work with a big smile on my face. And that probably created a lot of loyalty. Make sense? 
And then I help just about all of them buy. And half of those people sell and buy again, right? So um, surprise and delight is, is not about you, it's about them. Great work on that. She'll never forget that call probably. Okay, who else? I um, picked up a copy of Millionaire Real Estate Agent for one of my potential recruits. Nice. She was happy about that. So you, you dropped it off for them? I actually sent it through my son. I had him drop it off because I didn't hey, have I the gotta opportunity. I got to tell you, Donna, that's even better. Friends. Leverage, baby. Good work. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yep. Finish up. Uh, fin finish up, Donna. What, what were you saying? Your son dropped it off? Oh, yeah. I was just saying I had my son drop it off because I really didn't have the time to do it yesterday, but I wanted to make sure that she had it. And um, she was really happy to, to receive it. So Okay. I want to dig into that just for one second. So when you say you didn't have the time for that, can I tell you what else that means? Go ahead. It means you looked at your calendar and you determined that were, there were other things that you, that were a bigger priority for you and you chose to do those instead, yet you realize that that was also a priority, just not your priority and so you assigned that priority to somebody different. That's how business owners think. So that's phenomenal. Thank you. Good work. Thanks. Okay, who else? No one? Anyone, anyone struggling today? Do we need to give anyone a pep talk? Anyone need a high five? Not struggling today is my day off since I'm working this whole weekend. But as I was walking out the door, I shared with Bill, um, had a renter who I knew was going to become a potential buyer down the line. And we went back and forth just at the price point that he was looking at trying to rent. Had an incident where he had to go and drive down to Florida because of the um, the fights that were happening, basically, and check on his brother. He just got back and I decided to check in. Wasn't sure because I hadn't heard from him said, hey, you know, didn't even make it about, hey, let's go out, let's rent, because I just didn't know where he was at. Checked on him and said, hey, I just want to make sure that your brother's okay. Is there anything that I can do? I've got some friends down there who can check on him too in case you can't get there. And he's like, oh, I really appreciate that. He's like, no, I just spent this time um, a couple of days getting back and, and just in prayer, just decided all the stuff that you shared with me with the pros and the cons of renting now or buying now, which one would be better? So um, he's converted and now he's a buyer. And so he, time is of the essence. That's the type of guy he is. Yeah. He's speaking with Kathy today. He's going to get his prequal done and we will have him in something. His goal is in the next couple of weeks. That like we'll awesome. find the house and under contract. Okay. Can, um, I, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot a tiny bit, but can you yeah. just give the room a, a brief of how you explained the pros and cons really quickly? <laughs> I did a lot of research. Um, I spoke, I, I actually, because I, it's not a bad thing. I don't overthink it, but I actually do my research. So I, I pulled stuff online and just talked about um, the market stats that are right now for the buying market. Also what the trend is right now for trying to rent during this pandemic and just some of the things that are being, that are occurring um, that some of the high, um, rents are actually going higher and huh? Of course. Yeah, so exactly, not going to stop. Shared that. Actually, spoke with the two, uh, a couple of leasing offices, and they were upfront. And they just kind of said it without saying it that they definitely have changed their prices, knowing that people need to get in something and can't qualify to buy. And so they're going to get their money, basically. Um, so that's what I did. I love how they say changed from. rather than increased. Exactly. That's exactly what they said. <laughs> see so that's what I did. Words, see how important words are? Exactly. <laughs> um, when you show a buyer the slides that tell them or that show them, um, you know, that there's not a lot of inventory mm -hmm. and, you know, it's very likely that they'll be in a competitive situation. How do you flip that to 
make that attractive for a buyer? Well, I think part of it is even with renting, things were moving so fast. So, I mean, something would come in the market. He's like, let's see it. And he was always available right then and there. We'd go see it. And we're writing up the contract and they're like, oh, it's under contract already. Like it just, it's already gone. Um, so with all that, to be able to do something like this and know that he had a nice cushion that he can negotiate and, and put his best foot forward, he said at that point he would rather do that. What kind of budget does he have? Uh, 300,000 max, but he's got a nice cushion of 25,000 extra after closing and down payment should he have to go into um, a multiple situation. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that guy should be buying. He's got a budget. Yeah, so he's buying now. 25 in the bank, or more than oh, yeah. 25 in the bank, really 35 in the bank, right? Well, part of it is that he sends to his family in Ghana, um, but they're doing well right now, So, he, but it's still a good cushion that he's still safe. So he knows what he will and he won't do. He's very pragmatic. I know how to approach him. He's not the feels type guy, whereas another person is, they don't want the numbers. They want the emotion behind it. You really have to gauge who they are personally, what type of person they are, a D, uh, you know, any of those, a C, a S, and move forward mm -hmm. in that because that will get you a lot more, it'll get you further in the door and talking with them and negotiating and that being there awesome. for them. I should have yeah. put you on, I should have given you um, some advance notice that you'd be the the, uh, <laughs> the the leader of the call today. But um, does any does anyone know what she talk, is referring to when she says D-I-S-C, DISC? Are you all familiar with those concepts? Yeah, they went over it on the team meeting the other day. Okay, good. I okay. love very high C. <laughs> right. Um, for the most part, though, all of those people like to be asked questions, okay? A D might be the most resistant to a series of questions, what ultimately seems like you're wasting their time, yet you may have to drop in the line that says, hey, if I can just ask you a couple questions, it'll save you time. Then they're like, oh, well, sure, ask away, right? I is you gotta li limit the number of questions you ask them. S is will talk to you all day long, and C's know that when you get the answers to those questions and you put them into some order or structure, it will help them. They will love you. Make sense? So the like that guy may not have volunteered that he had that type of cash or that he was inter even entertaining purchasing. But it was these questions that she asked that drew that out most likely. Does that make sense? Yes. Great work. All right, man, everyone's got some good news. Brian's got a sharp headshot y'all are going to see in a day or two. <laughs> I, I hope Ben's having a little bit of a better day. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's what I heard. Oh my Lord. I that's felt fun. bad, but it, it did bring out some good smiles from me because it, it brought back <laughs> memories of my daughter going through the same thing. <laughs> yeah, Brian came to our house yesterday to, to do a headshot with my wife. Um, looks great. Okay. Um, I have not forgotten your request for the special stipulations document. I have received um, lists from a couple of agents. I'm just trying to um, grab a few more before I, you know, kind of present it to you guys, if you will. Um, I also want to remind you about Bold 100. Um, we are going to be doing Bold 100 as a group on Wednesday, Wednesday, July the 1st. So I want to remind you about a couple of commitments that I've made to you. First, um, remember Vulcan7.com is, uh, I've shared the username and shared the password with you. That is the source for expired listings data and for sale by owners data, for sale by owners um, da uh, data. And they also have a bunch of videos on how their process works and how their system works. I actually sent um, a video uh, to Marinella yesterday um, that I found on some other group that was like a big zoom on like kind of an intro to Vulcan 7. Um, do you mind posting that, Marinelli? Can you post that in one of the groups? Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, I, yeah, thank you for that. Um, so you have that as a resource. Remember, you also have Coal Resource Realty as a resource. So um, who was it? 
forget who it was, uh, sent me a couple of addresses yesterday. Um, and my assistant got that data for you guys right away. So if you have a area that you would like to um, get a coal list from, meaning like, let's say you have a, uh, a listing coming up in a couple of weeks, or you have a listing now that you want to reach out to the neighbors, or you have an open house this week and you want to reach out to the neighbors and invite them, something like that, um, just send me the address. I'll send you a list of about 1,500 people that live closest to that address. And there's some circle prospecting scripts in the Google Drive and you can reach out to them and, and uh, increase your contacts on that day. So um, the, the turn time is, you, my assistant usually works from about eight to 12 in the morning and then about seven to 11 at night. So um, the turn time is, it, it is very quick. <clears throat> okay, um, for those that want to come into the office um, and participate in Bold 100, um, you are more than welcome to do so. We do, you know, you do have to, you know, still do all the safety precautions and that kind of thing. But if you're in that big back room, we could probably have about, I don't know, maybe eight or 10 people in there without face masks if you are far enough away from each other. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions about Bold 100? We're going to start doing this, by the way, um, every month. Um, my hope is that we do it, I think I had said the first Wednesday of every month. The idea there is that it just jump starts your, your month. You get that renewed confidence that you can get on the phone with a bunch of people and you get the results from all that, right? You've booked a few appointments or you've added a handful of people to your database um, and it helps you kind of jumpstart your, your uh, monthly goals. Make sense? Okay. And I'm gonna come up with some cool ideas about how to reward you guys when you, when you hit your numbers. Next, um, I also made a commitment last month, and I'll do it again this month, that um, my preference is that you don't spend half of your day on the phone and half of your day on data entry, right? My preference is you spend 100% of your day on the phone and then either have a running list, of, you know, a Google Doc or something like that with all of your or a spreadsheet with, you know, name, email, telephone number, notes, what you talked about, that kind of stuff. If you if you create one of those, you can send that to me and my assistant will put it into your, if you're comfortable with giving us your, not us, I don't care what your password is, giving her your password and login, she'll put that stuff into command for you. Okay, free. Even if it's chicken scratch. Okay. Y'all, that's a huge gift, by the way. Thank you. I'm, I'm paying my, my kids, so. If I don't have to pay my kids and I could do it otherwise, I'd do it. I can. Well, we, I'll, I'll take care of that for you. And then you can pay your kids to do something else that you have to do. So you don't have to do that. Very true. Yeah. All right. They're going to learn how to cook and clean and. Oh, they've got that stuff. down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so thank you for that. Yeah, it, it, it is a gift. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm the one paying for her time. So um, what I want, I want, I want you to get trained on the fact that leverage is fun, right? You make a bunch of chicken scratch and you send a, you take a picture of it and poof, it appears in command. Right. And I want you to focus your energy on making contact that day. Okay. Okay. I'm also, um, you know, part of part of part of running this this group is is uh, is ideation, right? Keller Williams talks about that that idea, right? We come up with an idea, we try it, it works great. If it doesn't work, we fix it, we we adjust, we kind of we're trying to figure out what's working, right? What I'm what I'm noticing and what I think I I want to start shifting towards and and see how this could help is um, returning to a focus on one on ones. And what I, and I've been thinking about this a lot. And one thing that if I'm if my, my coach, for example, we talk the same day, the same time every week, right? We actually just switched our call. It's at two o'clock today, two o'clock on Thursday. So every week we know that's, that's when we're going to talk and I can prepare for that. And I've got a running list of questions that I, and that I have for her and topics that I have for her that I want to go over. And I think that's one of the things that's missing from this group is that um, the, the meetings are a little haphazard, or I'm talking about the one-on-one -on -one meetings, a little haphazard, 
Um, sometimes it's twice a week and sometimes it's twice every you know three months or something. So what I'd like to do is to, to get to a place where like let's say Liz, we're talking for, I'm gonna throw it out there to everyone and see what kind of reaction I get. Um, I think what I'd like to do is start with about, um, it's either probably gonna be, it's probably gonna be 30 minutes, um, 15 to 30 minutes, but I'd like to do it every week, right? Where let's say Ebony, we talk from eight to 8.15 every Tuesday. And you know that meeting's coming and you have, you've prepared for it. You know what we're gonna talk about. You know we're gonna talk about numbers. You know we're gonna talk about your, your business. We're gonna talk about the things you're doing well. We're gonna talk about the things you're not doing well. And there's one-on-one um, -on -one accountability, right? So actually let's do, let's do every week for 15 minutes. And there'll be time, you know, there'll be time when we might have to go over or we'll do a second meeting or something like that when, when there's something that really needs more time. But I want to add a little bit more one-on-one -on -one accountability uh, for both of us um, because it's very easy. We, you know, there's, there's people in our group. I mean, you see the reporting sheet. Some people haven't filled out their number in a month and you hadn't seen them on the call, right? I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that's not helping them build their business, right? And I, and I feel um, I've got a lot of mixed feelings about that. I feel bad about taking 10% from their money, but I also like sometimes I feel like I want it more than they do. Right. And I don't, I want, I want to avoid that completely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to send out um, some uh, times. I'll do that on the um, announcements page today. I'm going to send out some times um, that I believe I can keep every week. And then I want you to claim the spot. Okay. Sound fair? Any questions on that? Nope, sounds fair. Okay, beautiful. So we'll do, um, uh, we're gonna do 15 minute slots weekly. So by the way, that's better than 30 minute slots once a month. Doubling, doubling the one-on-one -on -one commitment, okay? But I, what I wanna do is know that like, you know, every Tuesday afternoon or whatever it is, I'm talking to Liz and I know exactly what sh her business looks like. And I know exactly why she wants her business to look that way. And if she's starting some new initiative, you know, let's say it's a, uh, Hey, I'm going to spend $50 a month on Facebook ads through, through command. Then we can talk about the specifics of where she is on that project. Makes sense. Cause otherwise it's just going to get lost in the shuffle. Makes sense. Okay. Um, Let's do, I want to do another day. I mean, we had some pretty, pretty cool results from surprise and delight. Okay. So I'd like to challenge you guys to do it again today. Who else can you surprise and delight? I didn't hear any stories in the group, so don't forget to share them in the group, but who else can we surprise and delight today? Okay. So at least one, at least, but I want you to do something that for somebody that they would have never expected. Okay. Doesn't have to be expensive. Liz changed a woman's life yesterday by making a simple phone call. Okay. So oh, one more thing on bold 100, I forgot to say, if, um, please don't send me the list like Tuesday night, S go ahead and send it to me right now and we'll get it in your hands. So you can, you know, put it onto an Excel spreadsheet, make it look pretty and be ready to hit the phones first thing in the morning. Okay. Um, okay, who has some questions? Anyone have any questions? Yes, what's bold 100? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start with that. Or uh, you could just tell me where to go and find out, but I, I don't know what that no, is. No, no, no problem. So bold is a, is a big um, class that MAPS puts on uh, from KW, the, the training, okay. organ, training wing or, or the coaching wing of KW. Um, bold has a uh, been around for about 10 or 11 years and has had a couple of iterations. Um, but one thing that's basically been constant throughout bold is this idea of a bold 100. This is that we would have a hundred contacts in one day. So contacts, remember a two way exchange. Um, they used to have it where it was basically just over the phone. Now we say it's acceptable to do a social media two way or a, uh, 
you know, a um, direct message or a text or a telephone call or an in-person two-way exchange, okay? Um, the idea is you'd have, you know, these sheets in front of you all day long where you're writing down, you know, hey, I talked to Joe Smith. Um, he, you know, his daughter's going to Georgia Tech next week and um, his, mo his mom's name is Peggy or whatever, right? And he has no real estate plans right now. Cool. N and you keep going. 100 people, right? And at the end of the day, you scan this thing in and my assistant pops it into your um, command. Make sense? Um, so 100 contacts in one day. The goal is, is it's virtually impossible to talk to 100 people in a day and not end up with some projects to work on that will ultimately lead to business at some point in the future, right? Some of those things, by the way, may be an introduction to a lender to talk about refinancing. Some of those things may be um, a referral to a painter or a, um, a referral to a tax attorney or a referral to a divorce attorney. It could be anything. All those things are a piece of value that you deliver to someone else that will ultimately come back to you in some way. That it's basically a day of giving deposits. I remember we talked about you can't go into, you can't withdraw without first depositing. And where do you, you said to, to make a list? Where does the list? So um, the, essentially you want, what I meant was you basically you want to prepare for it. So who okay. are the people that you're going to be calling? Are they going to be people in your sphere of influence? Are they going to be people that you want uh, to call that maybe are expired listings and for sale by owners. If so, you can get that data from the Vulcan 7 website. If you want to do the uh, the bold 100 or a portion of the bold 100 from uh, Circle Prospecting, then then I explain just send me the address and we'll get you that nearby list or multiple lists. That's fine too. Um, or if you want to go out into the marketplace and meet people, you know, grocery store, retail stores, gas stations, whatever parks and, and meet people that way, that'd be fine as well. So there's, there's a thousand, excuse me, a thousand different ways to do it. The end goal is, did you have a hundred back and forth conversations? Cool. Okay. I want to hear some conversations about surprise and delight today on the chat. And I also want to remind you that our all group session is today from three o'clock to four o'clock. And our guest is going to be Peggy Connors. She was, um, uh, when we took off last Friday for Juneteenth, we rescheduled and, um, um, hang on, Shana. Hang on. All right, let's see how fast we can get that list for you. Thank you. Um, when, we, when we took off for um, Juneteenth, this is the uh, rescheduled slot. And Peggy is um, one of our top agents. She's been in the business about four or five years. Um, great professional background prior to that. She's the number one agent in Country Club of the South. She, um, she's in like the eight to nine million dollar neighborhood um, annually in, in sales volume. Um, number one agent in Country Club of the South deals a lot in luxury. Um, so I want, uh, if you can, please support her and, and myself today. Um, by joining her at three o'clock in the Zoom room. And then tomorrow, we're going to have Kim Hutchins um, speak. She's going to be our lunch guest or success series guest. That's going to be from 12 to 1. Uh, Kim has been in the business about eight or nine years. She's been at KW, I believe, since the very beginning um, at KW Roswell. Um, she's currently our um, diversity task force representative, and uh, she is also a member of the ALC. She has been on team. She has led and grown a team. Um, she has uh, she's has some experience in working with some celebrity clients. Um, she has also dealt with some luxury property among plenty of other projects. And she's got a pretty cool story to tell as well. So um, I hope that you'll uh, put that in your calendar for tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Have an awesome day. Go surprise and delight. Them. Thank you, Belle. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.